What's going on guys? My name is Matthew and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this tutorial, what we'll be going over is how to use the Lumetri scopes within Premiere Pro, how we can adjust our color to make our footage look the way we want it to look. Let's dive in. All right, guys, let's dive on in here. So in this tutorial, what we're going to focus in on is the Lumetri Scopes panel. So you see it right up here to the left, and we have several different options when we scrub through. We have the Vector Scope, the Histogram, the Parade RGB, and the Waveform RGB. Now, each of these four are different ways in which we can read the color in our footage. Another thing we can do is go down here and choose 8-bit, 10-bit, float, and HDR. Now, basically, depending on the footage that you have, you would choose the corresponding option to your footage. So if you're working in an HDR format, which is pretty popular these days, you would choose that. But for this example, I have 8-bit footage. So let's stick with the 8-bit option. And over here with the wrench, we can choose how we want to read our footage, which scope to choose from. So let's start from the beginning and let's take a look at the vector scope. Now, what is the vector scope? So the vector scope essentially is a circular graph in which we can read the color of our footage. From the center, as we go outward, it will read the saturation. And around the circle, these corners over here, that reads the hue of your footage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, click on the footage, and head over to the right towards my basic correction panel. I'm going to take the temperature and first drag it to the left. As you can see, as I drag it further and further left, the saturation is heading towards the blue. So looking at the actual footage itself, you can definitely tell it's a lot more blue. And over here in the vector scope, the colors are trending towards that blue direction. If we take our temperature and now move it to the right, as we go along, you can see now it's heading more towards that red and yellow portion of the graph. And obviously looking at the footage now, definitely warmer. I'll double click to go back to the original settings. So now let's play with the tint. If we drag that to the left, Notice how it heads towards the green and the yellow. Drag it to the right. And we head towards the magenta and blue. Double click and we'll go back to normal. Additionally, let's play with the saturation. If I drag it to the right, notice how the blues get bluer and the yellows get more yellow. If I drag it to the left, notice how it gets closer and closer to the center, indicating that we don't have too much saturation in our footage. If we take it all the way to the left, it's at zero. Double click, and we're back to normal. So this is a very effective way of telling how much saturation there is in your image and which colors are particularly pronounced. A couple of more things to note with the vector scope. This initial shape right here, following along with these gray lines, staying within there means that you're staying within the broadcast standard. So if you're editing something made for television, it's key to make sure that your colors stay within these boundaries. Secondly, you might notice this line that goes from the middle to the top left of the circle. This is the skin tone line. 
So if you have a piece of footage in which we see a subject and you want to isolate the skin tone, you can play with that over here in the Lumetri color panel and drag your temperature and tint until the saturation of that skin gets closer and closer to this line. So that's the vector scope. Now let's take a look at the histogram. Now this particular scope is useful if you're more familiar with a Photoshop type of workflow. So if I take my temperature and drag it to the left towards the blue, notice how the blue right up here goes further and further left go the opposite direction and the red will go further and further. Let's do the same thing with the tint. Let's take it towards the green. Same thing. Take it to the right towards the purple. And there you go. Now let's play with the saturation. If we increase saturation, our values over here increase. If we decrease saturation, there's more and more gray until all the colors are gone, indicating that we have no saturation present. Now let's take a look at the parade. With the parade, we have a couple of different settings. If we right click and go over here, we have RGB, YUV, RGB white, YUV white. Let's go over here to RGB, and what you'll see are the values of your reds, greens, and blue, RGB. Now, essentially, as you look at this, up here are your highlights, over here are your midtones, and over here are your shadows. And as we look at the different colors, it will indicate which parts of the image show more red, green, and blue. So let's play with the temperature again in our Lumetri color panel. If we drag it to the left, notice how the red starts to go down and the blue starts to go up. Our red values are decreasing. Our blue values are increasing. And our green values stay the same. Now, let's drag it to the right. And we get the opposite effect. Look at our red values increase, our blue values decrease, and our greens remain the same. Now let's play with tint. Left we go, and look at that. The reds and blues decrease, the greens increase. Take it the other way. And it's the opposite effect. Our reds and blues go up, our greens go down. So this is a good way of detecting how much of a particular color there is available. Now let's take a look at the waveform. I'm going to right click and choose RGB again, because I think that's the best way to read your image quite frankly now similar to the parades we can look up here with the highlights over here with the midtones and down here for the shadows now full disclosure this is my favorite of the scopes because i think you can really read into a lot with what's going on in your image so let's have a closer look what's going on in the highlights well we see a lot of blues, and frankly, that makes sense. If we look at the footage, the sky is blue, so it would make sense that the blues are a little more pronounced than the other colors. In the midtones, we see a little more in the way of the greens and the reds. Looking at the footage, that makes sense as well. We have the green trees and that kind of faded look over here in the mountains. And towards the bottom, a little more blue value. And again, that kind of makes sense because if we look at the mountains over here, and more specifically the shadows, there is a blue tone to it. So again, let's go over to the temperature and let's take it to the right. 
Now, our reds increase all throughout the image. The sky looks a little more hazed. The red in the mountains pop a little more. And the greens start to look faded. Take it to the left. Now the blues are really pronounced. We kind of lose some of that red value, and that makes sense as we look at the scope. And the greens roughly stay the same, but they start to get a little washed as we take it further and further to the left. So you can really see how you can play with these scopes and get your desired outcome. Now, if we right click and go to presets, there's several options you can choose from. So depending on which scope you want to go for, which particular way you want to read your image, you can go for it. So for example, if I go over here to all scopes, you could go for all four and read your image in different ways and get it to the desired outcome. And what's really great about the scopes is you really don't need a calibrated monitor. And that's something that a lot of colorists will do. They'll calibrate their monitors so that the colors are as calibrated and even as possible. But with the scopes, you really don't need that calibrated monitor because using the data, it will give you all the color information that you need. And one thing I should note, I was using the basic correction panel over here within Lumetri Color. You can go into different areas. So for example, you could go with the creative section, play with those shadows and highlights down over here, as well as the tint balance. You can even go into your curves, which I covered in the previous video, and you can play with the individual colors and have a look at how that impacts your scope. So for example, if I go over here to my RGB curves, I just put a dot in the middle and I increase it. You can see how it's impacting the entire image. In this case, we're seeing all of our color data being pushed upwards. So the highlights become a little more pronounced as well as the midtones and the shadows kind of lose the color data. If we take it the opposite direction, we start to add a little more contrast to your image. If I went down here to hue versus sat and just put one dot and I dragged it upwards, you can see into the left how it's impacting your color, especially over here with your vector scope. I can double click and bring it back to normal. So really your, your possibilities are endless here and you can really fine tune the way you want your footage to look and there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's what you want to go for. There's a lot you can do with the Lumetri scopes. All right, guys, that's my tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw here, you can subscribe, like the video, throw down a comment below if you have any questions or thoughts, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Take care.